lack of attention leads to loss of connection. When we are not giving our all in attention to our partners or our spouse, we can be even be spending time with them, but time and attention are not necessarily the same things. Welcome to the Stronger Marriage Connection podcast. In this first introductory episode, Dr. Liz and I share a bit about ourselves, what makes our podcast stand out, and give an overview of the structure and format as we launch this new adventure together. And at the end, we leave you with our takeaways of the day. We hope you enjoy the show. Let's go. Welcome to Stronger Marriage Connection. The doctors are in. I'm Dr. Dave Schramm, otherwise known as Dr. Dave. And I'm a professor and extension specialist here at Utah State University. I'm alongside my amazing co-host, Dr. Liz Hale. She's a licensed clinical psychologist. We are so thrilled to be bringing you the very best tips and tools, the research and the resources to help you have the marriage of your dreams. So we're thrilled about our new podcast, Stronger Marriage Connection. We thought we'd kick off this first episode, we'll call it episode zero, with a little bit of a get to know you feel. So you can get to know us as, as podcast hosts. I'm going to kick it off first to Liz. Liz, tell us a little bit about yourself. Where are you from? So where did it all begin, right, Dave? Um, I, I am from Wenatchee, Washington. Is that a mouthful or what? Wow. That is. Wenatchee, Washington is the apple capital of the world. And it's a great place to raise fruit and a great place to raise children. I enjoyed my upbringing. I'm still very close to the people that I connect with. I have gone back every 10 years for a high school reunion. I won't tell you how old I am, but I've been to many of them. And uh, those people are still very near and dear to me. I only go back every 10 years, sadly, but um, still, still a big part of my growing years. From there, I went to Seattle. I kind of became a professional student. I did a bachelor's at Utah State, a couple of masters and a doctorate. Um, but I'm really passionate about the field. Um, it's my second time living in Utah. First time was when I was at Utah State, and I loved it there. But I was a lost little freshman. Do you ever see lost freshmen? We, we see those all the time, <laughs> all the time here at USU. I'm, I'm sure I look like a deer with, in, the, in the headlight look um, because I started out in special education, and that kind of overwhelmed me. So my sister had been to Utah State several years before that. Her advisor was Dr. Bill Stoll in marketing and secondary ed, DECA. You've probably heard of DECA, right? Yeah, absolutely. That's what that program was, dual, a, a dual degree. Anyway, Bill Stoll put his arm around me, took me, took me under his wing, and I ended up in marketing and education, even though I called home and I said to my dad, Dad, you know what? I think I'd really like to be a psychologist. Huh. And he said, no, you don't. You can't make any money in psychology. So... I, I didn't pursue psychology. I kind of went the long way around to finally ending up to where I am today. But Utah State, those were wonderful years of development as well. I have such good memories there. And I can only imagine the contribution you make as a mentor at Utah State. Tell me about you and, and where you grew up and how you got to where you are now at USU. Yeah, yeah. The, the Shram Fam story starts in good old Payson, Utah, so Southern Utah County. Um, I was born and raised there. My parents still live in, in this, in the same house, uh, four older sisters and a younger brother. And I always wanted to, I, I loved helping people. I love listening to people, relationships and the, the struggles and things. And so I thought I wanted to go into marriage and family therapy, uh, but I did not. I chose a different route. So I was an undergrad at, at BYU and I thought, you know what? I really like to help people, but I went to a conference that changed all that. It was more about prevention and education. Back then it was called uh, Smart Marriages Conference. And oh, yes, I remember that, that well. Do you remember Smart, smart Marriages? Did you actually oh, go to yeah. Smart Marriages? Yeah. You bet. So that, you bet. that was a big deal. It was all about education. It, it's helping things go right instead of what to do when things go wrong. So I came up to Utah State. So we have that in Calumet. Uh Go Aggies, right? And yeah. I earned my master's degree in human development and family studies instead of the therapy route. And this is where I learned about extension, about uh, cooperative extension. It's really about taking the research, developing programs and getting that out to the communities. And I love that aspect of it. I um, graduated from Utah State and went to Auburn University in Alabama. We were there for three years and... Um, yeah, it was a great experience. Uh, earned my PhD in family studies, graduated, went to 
University of Missouri. So that was my first job. And I was there nine years as an extension specialist and a professor there at, at Mizzou. I had great experiences that really helped um, shape shape what I do with with happiness and positivity and parenting and couple relationships. And now six years later, uh, I've been here now for USU for six years, came back to Utah mm -hmm. State. We love, love Cache Valley. Uh, and now, yeah, the, the Shram fam is, is here. So let me, let me ask you, Liz, uh, um, tell us a little bit about your, your sweetheart, Ben, you married a little bit later yeah. in life. Tell us about I that experience. Did. We were 50 when we married. I mean, that's, <laughs> doesn't happen very often, I suppose. Well, maybe with gray divorce, it's happening more often, right? Yeah. Anyways, right. We'll talk about in one of our segments coming up. Um, that was Ben's first time being married. I actually had married in my 20s when I was living in Seattle. I uh, brought someone into my faith. He joined the church. He really wanted nothing to do with my religion, but didn't think I'd marry him unless he joined my faith. So... I almost knew enough not to get involved in that marriage. I remember just the great trepidation going into that day. And I definitely knew enough to get out. It was an old eight or nine months later, like having a baby, right? Birthing a really difficult, mm. painful time of betrayal that taught me a lot. I don't think that any experience ever has to be wasted. And it wasn't probably just the religion. I think it was his other actions as well. I, I doubt the guy was really faithful. In, uh, in just that short period of time, something happened with a neighbor of mine. and um, mm. But boy, you just don't ever stop growing. And that yeah. really taught me. Sometimes I'll be sitting with a, um, a single individual. I don't see singles too much, but occasionally I, I break that rule of thumb, especially if I feel like I could connect with someone and make a difference. But I remember just sitting across from a couple individuals through my 30 years and just feeling like the hair raising up on the back of my neck because I think, oh my gosh, I know exactly what you're talking about. A similar story of betrayal, wanting to trust someone, um, not fully knowing all the details, making an unwise decision, having regrets, and yet um, nothing is ever wasted. Nothing has to be wasted. So I learned a great yeah. deal. And you know what I else, Dave, you know, about that marriage is that I don't know that I would appreciate Ben the way mm -hmm. I appreciate him today. He naturally mm -hmm. seemed to know how to do marriage well. He's really better naturally at marriage than I was. If we ever had problems in those early points of marriage and we did have some issues, it was usually me, yours truly, the marriage therapist. <laughs> yeah, not <laughs> not proud to say yeah. that. <laughs> Where, where Ben is pretty a pretty unconditionally loving man. I don't know if that's because how he was raised. I didn't have the ability to get to know his parents. They were both gone. My mom was gone at our wedding. We had one living parent, and that was my father. And wow. so I'm so glad, even though I wanted to elope, I'm so glad we did do a marriage, um, a temple ceiling, and also um, a wonderful luncheon buffet at the top of the Joseph Smith Memorial Building. And my dad was there to witness all of it. And then he passed away just four months later. Wow. So I'm so glad we went and did the big to-do, which was not too big of a to-do, but more than I really would have wanted initially. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. What yeah, about your marriage? <laughs> yeah. You know what? Um, Jamie and I, we just celebrated, uh, 24 years together in August. Congratulations. So we, yeah. We've been together 24 years. We were high school sweethearts. Um, just started getting dating, you know, toward the end of our junior year. Um, and I served a, a mission for our church, came back and we were married in Salt Lake and, um, she's really is, she's just the, the woman of my dreams. Seriously. Oh, I know that's sometimes cliche to, to say, great. but she's also my, my best friend. Um, we have four kiddos. Four children. We have three daughters and a son. And our oldest was actually just married in June. And so we're at this new stage of, of married. And I've studied newlyweds and I've, I've you know, mm. analyzed and looked at what predicts and, and try to help them along the way. So it's interesting now as a parent to see them um, in this new marital journey for them. So absolutely love, love the Shram fan. We love outdoors and, and traveling <laughs> together. I love snowboarding and doing those types of, of fun activities. Um, Liz, let me ask you then professionally, I mean, what kind of, what got you into this? Where did you, you know, schooling and what are you doing now? Are you in Salt Lake, right? right. Practicing private yes. practice. Yes, I'm in Utah. Yes, been here 19, almost 20 years and been in private practice for 30 years between the two states. 
And I've only been in marriage and family therapy just from the get go. I just knew that's really what I wanted from the aspects and the umbrella of psychology, marriage and family. There was just no other interest, really, even though other things were appealing, right? Like forensics and neuropsychology, but uh, marriage and family was where I always came back to. Dr. John Gottman is from Seattle. So I met him early on and then, and Neil Jacobson when he was alive and working as his partner. So even though I was at a different school, I was getting my doctorate at Seattle Pacific University. They were just across the way. So I was interested in the love lab and all the things that they were doing just inherently. It was just kind of who I was at my core, I guess. I was just always fascinated by by marriage and the families we grew up in, our family of origin and um, how we grow up and if we grow up and that marriage is a second chance to do it all over again. I really do think that marriage is the great self-improvement program. We'll be right back after this brief message. And we're back. Well, let's dive right in. And then there's you, Dave. You are this extraordinary presenter. You have done to date about 500 presentations throughout the globe, it seems. I'm so impressed with that. I loved your TED Talk. Was that like a, a must-do item on your list? It, yeah, it really was. It was one of those bucket list items that I thought I would love. You know, this this big stage. I love presenting. I love sharing the research uh -huh. about, again, happiness, about parenting, and about marriage. And so I thought, you know, I'm going to, I want to do a TED talk. So I applied to several across the United States and was accepted at the at one in Florida. And interestingly enough, it was in January of 2020, having no idea, you know, right, that COVID would come upon us and, and change the world forever. And, and gave that TED talk on what makes for a great workplace. And I talked about treating people like family. Uh, I so loved I loved it. That. I yeah, loved that was it. A great dude. experience. Yes. That was, so that was a lot of fun. Um, I loved early on. I studied newlyweds. I did one of the largest newlywed studies ever in Utah, um, analyzing what predicts, you know, happiness in those newlywed years. And then I do, I just love presenting. I love whether it's stages, uh, in high schools, I've done several high school assemblies on suicide prevention on, on positivity and mental health, um, parenting, developing curriculum and trainings, uh, relationship education, and right now, a lot of it is on positivity. I talk about happy hacks and maybe future episodes, we'll get in more to, to positivity and, and happiness. But I, I do, I love being able to apply the research, taking what we know in research, developing programs and taking it out to, to audiences, wherever they may be um, all across the, the country. Yeah, one of the things that I absolutely love, love, love to do. So that is a labor of love, giving your whole heart. You're just going to wear yourself right out in this lifetime, aren't you? You're yeah, one of those you know, people. <laughs> it is. That's, and I, I love doing that. I'm sharing. Yeah. I was fortunate enough, Liz, really to grow up in a family that just strong values and strong connection. And so that's why I thought, you know, let's let's do something to help people have stronger connections. Now, you, I yeah. know I've seen lots of segments uh, of you, Liz. You've been on TV for several years. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about how well, did you get into that gig? Oh, yeah, really. I still ask myself that. But just a little bit about families. I just have one older sister, so very small family, but it is so mm -hmm. fundamental where we come from, isn't it? My yeah. parents were also high school sweethearts like you and Jamie. They grew uh -huh. up together. And um, that just is so meaningful to me as far as that foundational concrete place of where we come from. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that we can't recover from bad childhoods, right? No childhood is mm -hmm. perfect. Yeah. That's why I think marriages is really our, our second chance of doing it right, just on a, a different level as adults this time. But yes, so the social media piece or the radio television piece, wow, I had this chance. I think you know what it was when they hired me at this new woman's station through KSL. I think it was my last name, Hale, because of the, the Hale Theater, I think yeah. they automatically thought that maybe I could draw a crowd. <laughs> <laughs> they were right. And, um, I, don't, I don't think I drew a crowd. Dave, that was probably the hardest job of my career. Um, the Dr. Liz Hale show every day, nine to noon, coming up with things to say. I was afraid to get a call. What was I going to say? I was afraid not to get a call. Now what am I going to say? Um, yeah. It was tough. So every Sunday night, I just got that terrible feeling in my stomach. I don't know if you've ever felt that way about a career. 
or a oh, job, yeah. but oh, I didn't think that was my finest moment. So much wanting to make a difference. Not, not sure that I did. KSL didn't take that radio show too far. I think it was less than a year, uh, but it was a great experience. Met some tremendous people who were also on that woman's radio station. And then by then, Studio 5 was birthed uh, on the TV side of KSL. And so I have been a contributor there. Now we're just going into our 17th season. Wow. That's remarkable, isn't it? That's and that's amazing. just a handful of women behind the scenes who are making such a difference. Studio 5 has really created a, an amazing name for itself with Brooke Walker as the host. It's been a privilege to be there. And that keeps me on my toes. You know, so I have such respect for you doing all these presentations. They they require a lot of blood, sweat and tears from me. <laughs> yeah. I work really hard on those segments. They don't come easy. I always have my notes. I'm forever in awe of people that have no notes when they go on live TV because my mind goes blank. Does your mind ever go blank when you're on stage? Oh, absolutely. It has. Yeah. On, both on TV and on stage. Um, and TV yeah, too. Yeah. How do you recover? What's your what's your trick? <laughs> yeah. I try it. Sometimes I'll stall. Yeah. Or I'll smile or I'll walk around or sometimes put my head down. <laughs> I'm faking it. And then I come back and I think, okay, this is, the, you know, pause good. for, for effect. And then I come back into there it. There you go. Not pause easy, right? For a cause. Yeah. Good for you. Good for yeah. you. Liz, our paths have also crossed, not only at Utah State, we have that connection and helping couples, but also with the Utah Marriage Commission, which really sp sponsors and produces this this podcast, tell us your uh, your background, and we'll talk a little bit more about the commission and the goals. But tell us about sure. your involvement with Utah Marriage Commission. Yes, you know, I was on the the board a couple times since in my almost twenty years of being here as a um, a board member, and then a vice chair, and then a chair. And then later on became the voice, the representation for StrongerMarriage.org. And that was, a, that was very near and dear to my heart. That was a big push on trying to get the word out of what is a healthy marriage. So the Utah Marriage Commission, 24 years strong. I'm just so proud of that commission and being a part of it. And when you first called, I thought, oh man, at first I was a little tired. I think I'm tired often. <laughs> I had COVID <laughs> twice. I think I had COVID at the time you said something. Yeah. And I really, I hesitated because I really didn't feel my best. Talking it over, over with my husband, I just said, I don't think I'm going to do that podcast, you know? And hmm. he goes, really? He goes, it just seems like it's right up your alley. Are you, are you sure you don't want to go for it? And I, I thought, well, I sure like David Schramm. I mean, he's just so impressive. And I sure love the message of stronger marriages. I sure love Utah Marriage Commission. So pretty soon it's like, why am I not doing this? You know, fortunately, I grew out of COVID, right, eventually, but it took a good month each time. And I'm just so glad to be here today working this with you, Dave. It's a privilege to be able to connect with listeners and even viewers who are watching the podcast uh, and just recognizing that marriage is tough sometimes and it's not perfect for any of us. But there, we know more than ever before about what makes marriage thrive. And to me, that's what's exciting, is sharing the real truth of the science behind love. Yeah. And that's, I'm so grateful, Liz, that you accepted this. Uh, my, my begging, my pleading, thank you so much for joining me on this, this journey, I think, that we'll have. We'll bring on guests. You know, some weeks it'll just be our conversation. Um, but you, you really nailed it. Stronger Marriage Connection. And that's what the Utah Marriage Commission is all about, providing resources uh, influencing family policy, being able to uh, work with coalitions and communities to help strengthen relationships. And one of the things, Liz, I think that really sets apart our podcast from others is our perspective, our backgrounds, right? You being married early on and then a divorce, then marrying mm -hmm. later mm -hmm. on in life. You, you have a counseling. That was an annulment, Dave. I'm really sensitive yeah. about that one. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah, thanks for the correction, Liz. That, that's exactly right. I don't know why. I don't know why that made a difference. I just felt so gypped, right? After eight or nine months. Yeah. Are you kidding me? After walking a straight line and that's what I get? You know, I think a lot of people can, can understand that betrayal and feeling so let down by everyone, yeah. everything, right? God, myself. So anyway, I kind of say that a little tongue in cheek, but... It did feel a little better to have it voided, to have it annulled. Eh, just me, just me. <laughs> yes. Yeah, no, I, and that's, but that's the perspective. You bring a female perspective. I think that you bring with your background, your experience, your clinical experience. I didn't know about your kind of Gottman background. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's, 
in my mind, he, he's the guru of all of all relationships. And so to have that experience, to see couples, I don't have that. I don't bring a couple counseling relationship <laughs> background, but I bring, I would say some of more of the research, looking yes. at the research side of things, kind of the, you know, the, the theory, the application, the education, because people can, can Google answers all, all they want. So why this mm-hmm. podcast? I think we really do. We combine the research base with the clinical practice that you have seen um, couples work through this. And I've been able to analyze and study couples as they go through this relationship journey. And so I think our combination, I, I'm really excited for it to, to see where things go with this podcast. Um, so why, why relationship, a stronger marriage connection itself? The word connection in my mind is, uh, it brings to mind, we have three, we're all born with this three essential needs, at least these three. And the first one is safety. And that's, that's physical, you know, that's having our, our food, clothing, shelter, as well as emotional safety, feeling like I can, I can risk, that I can share things without, without getting burned. We'll talk later about uh, domestic and sexual violence and, and those things that, that intrude on that safety. So that's the first need that we all have. The second need we have, research suggests, is satisfaction. To do fun, enjoyable things, right? To go on, on dates and to have fun hobbies and go see a movie and go bowling and do fun things. And the third need that we all have is the need for connection. We're all born with this, this longing for belonging, really, this craving for connection with, with other people. And in this part, you know, a, a partner, a spouse, which brings to mind, Liz, I think we have to make this clear right up front that our podcast is meant for couples in all types of relationships. We'll, we'll bring on um, experts in step families and step couples. We'll have information that I, I think applies for LGBTQ plus uh, uh, couples Couples who've been married a long time uh, will bring on those who are have been single and divorced and back single. I think those who are just kind of drifted apart, who no longer uh, feel like they're more roommates than than friends. And so yeah. that's really the name of this. It's it's about emotional connection, isn't it? It is. And, you know, initially I wasn't really a fan of calling it that. You remember our earlier conversations. Yeah. I just really love stronger marriage. I thought that said it. That's enough. Uh, I was a spokesperson for strongermarriage.org, right? So it was kind of personal to me. But I think you are absolutely right, spot on to call this stronger marriage connection because that is really what it's all about. And the greatest pain is when we have those disconnections Mm -hmm. in marriage and really any other aspect of our lives, even at work when there's a disconnect, right? That can be a really miserable work day. And we spend so much time at work as your beautiful TED talk talked about, that we really need to bring some of those good skills into the workplace since we spend so much time there. Yeah, absolutely. So Liz, uh, tell us a little bit about kind of, you know, the structure, give our listeners a little bit about, uh, give them a little sneak peek, a little taste, I guess, of some of the the topics and and how things are going to go moving forward. We'll cover all kinds of topics and we'll even target specific situations from newlywed stress to step family struggles. That's right. We're going to ta- tackle the tough topics like money, in-laws, even sexual intimacy. We'll be inviting guests, therapists, experts and authors, academicians to dig into the trenches of how to create a stronger marriage connection. Some guests are going to have programs. Courses, books, and other terms and items that we'll discuss and share. So it's all going to be great information. Yeah. And we're going to wrap up each episode, Liz, with what we'll call a takeaway of the day. It's kind of a little um, a little nugget, right? Something that you really feel like is important that listeners uh, really remember. And so I'll start out the takeaway of the day. My takeaway of the day is, is this. I like to say lack of attention leads to loss of connection. When we are not giving our all-in attention to our partners or our spouse, we can be even be spending time with them, but time and attention are not necessarily the same things. And so my takeaway really is giving that all-in attention to our spouse or partner to build that relationship. What about you, Liz? What's your takeaway I, of the day? I think this should be our hashtag, by the way. Lack of attention leads to loss of connection. It's beautifully it sad. Yeah, I love that you coined that. You know, what, what my takeaway today is that nothing is ever wasted. I think it's okay to have those times in your marriages or maybe a former marriage that you're not proud of, that you have regrets. Um, nothing's ever wasted. No pain, no gain is not just for diet and exercise. I think it's for life itself. 
We're going to learn here together. Every day, every moment is a new moment to do it better. We're going to talk about that here on Stronger Marriage Connection. Oh, thanks so much, Liz. So as we wrap up, again, we're going to point you to StrongerMarriage.org for resources, for the show notes. We're going to have what we call invites and insights, so you can get all the information there. We hope that you'll subscribe. We hope that you'll share this with listeners. And if you're on social media, we hope that you'll interact with us. Share what you like. Share even some questions that you have that you want us to address, some topics that are of interest to you. So don't be afraid to reach out and let us know what you like and what you hope to see on the Stronger Marriage Connection podcast. Without you, without you, there won't be a podcast, right, Dave? Without our listeners. That's exactly it. So thanks so much for joining us on this episode of Stronger Marriage Connection, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining us today. Do us a favor and take a few minutes, if you haven't already, to subscribe to our podcast and the Utah Marriage Commission YouTube channel. Leave a review and share with a friend. You can also follow and message us on Instagram at Stronger Marriage Life and on Facebook at Stronger Marriage. We'd love to hear from you. Tell us what topics you want us to explore or what you loved about today's episode. And don't forget to check out our website, strongermarriage.org, for show notes and more great resources from the Utah Marriage Commission for improving your relationship connection. Finally, a big thanks to Utah State University Extension, Rex Polanis, and the Utah Marriage Commission for producing each episode.